Yes, guys, welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to another episode of Five Things We Learned. Well, I have to look back at that embarrassing, disgusting, disgraceful performance against Burnley yesterday. Ten men. Ten men, no manager, and we still, still couldn't get the job done. Like, if they call us blue billion pound bottle jobs now, I understand. I understand. I'm not even doing any defending. The players don't want to do any defending. I'm not doing any defending. I can't be bothered for it. Cannot be bothered for it. What an awful game that was. Awful individually. Awful structurally. Awful in the second half as always. Everybody has to hold it. Everybody has to hold it. The manager, the players... The directors, because they've brought this manager in. And also the lack of, inexper of experience as well. As a club, as an entire entity, we all have to hold it. All of us. Absolutely embarrassing. And we deserve every bit of corn that we're receiving right now. Before we start, though, I do want to shout out the sponsors. Big up match, Bingo. As always, this is Bingo over Twist. Instead of numbers, you have fouls, goals, offsides and other moments on the pitch that you're trying to predict. Games are capped at two quid, so you don't have to worry about being responsible. They also offer free games if you just want to try it out. And 35% of, of the uh, profits go to the Stroke Association. So guys, get involved. Click the link right now down in the description below. And yeah, let's, let's get into this game. So it didn't even start well. First 10, 15 minutes, you could you could argue Burnley were the better team. Then we start to grow into the game a bit more. We start creating a bit more on the right hand side. Can't really get the finish off. But we're playing, we're getting into the game a little bit more. I want to say playing well, but I'll use that term a bit loosely. Then we get a penalty and a red card. And a red card for company. 1-0 up. We should be cruising. We should be cruising. Then, hey, the second half happens. The second half happens and they go into their low block. And we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. We never know what to do when we play a low block. We, we just sit there and we suffer and we just look clueless. And that's it. We just hold on to possession for the sake of holding on to possession. The structure is a mess. Defensively and offensively, although I will say offensively, Gallagher plays a big part in it because that guy never stays in his position. He'll either be on the left or on the right, and then you wonder why we struggle to build up through the middle because you're not there to connect the midfield in the attack. This is why I can't be bothered with people trying to act like this guy is the face of our club. He isn't. He's, an, he's another one who just isn't good enough that people overhype because he came from Cobham. He ain't it. He ain't it at all. But the whole forward line fell asleep in the second half. Jackson, for however good he was in the first half, disappeared in the second. Mudrick, the same, disappeared. Um, Enzo, to be fair, was bad and I gave him credit for. He made a lot of good passes in the game. It's just the forward line messed him up. I'll give Poch credit for bringing Sterling on. I do think it killed our midfield taking Caicedo off. It meant we were a lot more culpable in transition. But it led to a goal. And that should have been enough. But then it leads to my first point. Set pieces. Defensively and defensively, we are so bad at set pieces. It, it's baffling. It's genuinely baffling. Like some of, some of the set pieces that you saw in that Burnley game, every single one that we were defending, we looked like conceding. Every single one that we took, we never looked like scoring. But we decided to get rid of our set-piece coach. Because our manager scoffs at the idea of a set-piece coach and thinks, we don't need one. The players should be able to do it themselves. Well, they can't. It's 2024. You need to have structured set-pieces, and we don't have that. We don't have that at all. Second point, the end product. The end product from the players was not good enough. Not good enough at all. Sterling comes on, misses his typical big chance. Jackson had a big chance. I think Enzo made about two, three brilliant passes to the likes of Gallagher and Gusto. Wasted. Absolutely wasted. 
In the final third, we always... We, 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 I was going to say always, but that's not really fair because we've started scoring a lot more over the last few games. But today felt like we, were, we reverted back to type. It felt like we went straight back to the old start of the season Chelsea where we waste literally every single chance that we have. Every chance. Struggled against a low block. Felt like Forest, felt like West Ham away again. Just again, the same old BS. And that that is on the players and that's where they have to hold it. Because as much as I'll talk about the manager and his structure and everything, it's a 10-man Burnley. It's a 10-man Burnley team, like... Really? Really? Do you, need, do you really need your hands held to see off this game? Really? This is why I'm saying, like, Poch and the players, all of you, all of you have to hold the smoke. All of you. If your name ain't Palmer, Kaiseido, you could push Enzo in there. Probably about it, really. Maybe Gusto, although Gusto started poorly. Also, get well soon, please. We can't afford another injury at right back. We are we will literally be finished if that's the case. That's it. That's it. Like, big up Palmer, though. The only positive I have is him. Yet again, another masterclass, but it's just completely ruined. Ruined by everybody else around him. So that's unlucky, but thank God we have him. Because if we didn't have Palmer, I don't know where we would be. I genuinely don't know where we would be if we didn't have Cole Palmer in this squad. Now, I've seen people try to go at him because of him being overly selfish and everything. My guy's got 30 GA. He's like the only attacker that I have any faith in. Like, strong faith in. Even the likes of Jackson, it's like you're developing. You're getting better. You're in form. But you ain't Palmer. Not yet. Not yet. I don't care about him... Holding on to the ball for a little bit too much. Because who's to say anybody else can be trusted? Really and truly, who's to say that? And anyway, when you've got the likes of Sterling, who clearly don't know when to pass. Whenever he's one-on-one -on, -one on goal. I know he did get the assist in spite of that. But we've seen the selfishness from him. And we've seen how it's impacted games. When he didn't make that 3v1 pass against Wolves, I saw Palmer become selfish after that point. I saw Jackson become selfish in that game after that point. So I'm not surprised. But Palmer, no, no negatives with him. No negatives with him. My final point is my, hopes, my hope is gone. My hope is gone. I said in the last video, our next four games had to be wins. This is the first one. And we dropped it to a 10-man Burnley team with no manager. You can't tell me to be confident going into any game anymore. Even Sheffield United away when we go next week. I have a feeling we're going to make that one difficult because we always seem to do it. But hey, hopefully God is with us over the next two months. Because that's the only way we're getting Europe. That's the only way. Could have sacked Poch time ago. But we're stuck here now. We're stuck here now. And I feel like I'm finally re reaching stage five of grief. I've just got to the acceptance stage of it all. Just wait for us to bottle the Man United game like we always do. And then... <coughs> done. Done. Finished. Done. But I'm also done with this video. So big up to everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button. Subscribe. All of that. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Take care. And up the chills. Potch out.